Here are some tips for severe weather safety. Severe weather safety is very important, and you can be severely injured if proper precautions are not taken. The following are some guidelines for staying safe during severe weather events. Number 1. Know the difference between an advisory, watch, and warning. Number 2. Have multiple ways of receiving severe weather warnings. Number 3. Know what to do when a warning is issued. We will now discuss tip number 1, knowing the difference between an advisory, watch, and warning. An advisory, or statement, is the lowest priority alert. Advisories are issued when no impacts are anticipated, as long as the suggested steps are taken. A watch, means severe weather is likely in the area, but not yet occurring. Tornado and severe thunderstorm watches are issued by the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, when severe weather is anticipated within the next few hours. You should postpone any outdoor activities scheduled for that day, as weather conditions can change rapidly. A warning, means severe weather is imminent or already occurring. Follow all instructions given. It is important to continue to monitor the weather, since conditions can become life-threatening in a matter of minutes. We will now discuss tip number two, having multiple ways of receiving severe weather warnings. Most weather experts recommend NOAA Weather Radio as your primary source. The National Weather Service has transmitters set up all across the U.S. and adjacent islands that continuously broadcast weather information, 24 hours a day, on frequencies ranging from 162.4 to 162.55 MHz. A NOAA weather radio can be purchased at most stores, for around $30. When a warning is issued for your area, your NOAA weather radio will sound an alarm, alerting you of the warning. Another good resource is any local news channel. Most news programs will interrupt their regular programming to bring you severe weather information, and to give a visual representation of the location and intensity of storms, which will better allow you to prepare for severe weather, since you will be able to pinpoint where the storm actually is. Another source is AM and FM radio. The emergency alert system can be activated for weather alerts, which will interrupt the regular broadcast of the station, and will play either a shortened version of the warning through a system called MNET, or the full warning you heard on your NOAA weather radio. A fourth way is your phone. Wireless emergency alerts, or WEAs, are alerts that are sent to your cell phone, to warn you of emergencies. Remember to have multiple sources of weather warnings, so if one becomes inoperable, you will have multiple backups. We will now discuss tip number three, knowing what to do when a warning is issued. When a severe thunderstorm warning is issued, this means the National Weather Service's radars have detected a thunderstorm capable of producing damaging winds, large hail, or even a possible tornado. Move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building until the warning expires or is cancelled. When a tornado warning is issued, this means radar has detected a possible tornado via visible rotation, or there is one currently on the ground, and has been confirmed. Move immediately to the lowest floor of a sturdy building, preferably a basement, away from windows and exterior walls. If no basement is available, go into an interior room such as a closet, and cover yourself with pillows and blankets to protect yourself from flying debris. If you are in a mobile home, or a vehicle, evacuate them and get inside a well-built form of shelter, taking the same steps. When a flash flood warning is issued, this means heavy rain will cause pop-up flooding. Do not drive your vehicle through flooded roadways, and be sure to follow all barricades. Only a few inches of rapidly flowing water is enough to carry away your vehicle. If you are at home in a low-lying area, move to higher ground away from potential flood waters. The National Weather Service holds annual severe weather drills to allow the public to practice their severe weather procedures. Taking these drills seriously will allow you to come up with a severe weather plan and be able to practice it, so when the weather turns hazardous, you will be prepared. For additional severe weather safety tips, please visit the National Weather Service's website at weather.gov.